Hello and welcome to another Live Code Hangout. Today we will be working on the Western Friend website. You can find us on github.com slash Western Friend WF website, the Western Friend website project. It's a fairly big website. We're working on an e-commerce feature. Payment processing with PayPal. Uh, previously, we have implemented payment processing with Braintree, the processor, which was acquired by PayPal. But we've made a recent decision just to go back to or sort of implement PayPal standard checkout and subscription. I've got a fairly large pull request in progress. I realized that the donations are already taken care of for us. So we'll use a regular PayPal donation button. <coughs> Sorry. I should say before getting further into this stream, if you want, want to check out this, the progress and the solution, the code were, as I mentioned, open source on GitHub. And here is the pull request for this specific work. Pull request number 907. Um, you know, I started with payments. We have a bookstore, part of our e-commerce package, and you have to pay for, for books. That is done. I realized, though, I can't just kind of halfway switch our payment processor. I got to go. It's all or nothing, basically. We can't. Uh, I can't merge a commit uh, pull request that's half Braintree, half PayPal. I gotta kind of think holistically. Luckily, uh, this is only a two pronged effort. Now we'll, today we'll focus on subscriptions, which are a little bit different than orders that are where orders are mostly just a payment. Subscriptions are recurring and they require us to set up two things in PayPal, a product and a subscription, which is okay. I suppose that's how they, they do it. So we'll review the PayPal API here. I've been doing this a bit, but here's the um, current Subscription documentation. We have to set up a product and then a subscription that allows people to subscribe to that product on a recurring basis. And I'm thinking I will just pre configure these products in PayPal. Hopefully, I can get away with. I'm not trying to cut a corner here, but I'm trying to avoid duplicating a bunch of configuration across our website and PayPal's website. Our subscriptions don't, the subscription tiers don't change. Uh, very often, but when they do, I, I don't want the editor to have to edit um, the definitions in PayPal and our website. I'm just thinking that through. It might be easier for them to edit them in the PayPal website, but then I would have to fetch the list of subscription types from the PayPal website and render those into our subscription interface. And on that note, let me just show this real quick. Uh, let's see, start the development database. Uh, so we have basically been working on this for a while. And our subscription to the magazine Page requires you to be logged in. I'm not sure if I've created a super user. I think I have in my local development environment. Yeah, so we have essentially um, it's a matrix. It's a subscription matrix. So it's you know twelve subscription choices actually. But rather than giving people a big list of 12 choices and kind of leaving them to their mind to map out what each of these choices means, uh, we thought it would be a better user experience if you kind of chose first, if you only want the PDF, 
print or both and then you can um, based on those the pr uh, prices are sort of presented to you and you select from a, um, a price tier this is sort of it's a nonprofit organization so we just let people you know in good faith choose the price that they can afford it's so that you know it has a cost uh, but cost shouldn't be a big barrier so basically we I would like to keep this user flow, which means I don't want to duplicate these 12 in PayPal and our code and then have to synchronize the costs. The subscription costs are actually defined in code because um, I really couldn't figure out a simple way to design a user interface that allows us to define, to Uh, I think I did figure out one approach. Where I would just make fields explicitly for every combination. So I would have on our subscribe page, for example, we would have a field PDF basic field, PDF true cost field, PDF low income field, PDF international. You know, so we'd have 12 fields and each of those would have a corresponding price. That would be one way of um, allowing the user to edit those prices uh, currently they're defined in code as i mentioned the key is that they do change at times we just updated our subscription pricing model and that means they would also need to be updated in paypal i'm trying to avoid that situation so ideally if i can just have in paypal one subscription for a subscription product and dynamically pass the, the price, the subscription price, and perhaps this metadata into PayPal as well. So if we could use field like tags or something like that, uh, that would be the ideal solution, sort of from one perspective. I know there's trade-offs. So that's what I'm thinking. That's where we're at. So we will create like a subscription product and a subscription plan one other caveat is we might need two subscription plans for a yearly let's see a monthly and a yearly that's how I had to do it in Braintree but if all of this if all of this could be um, the frequency in the pricing scheme, if I could specify those at runtime when I create, when I subscribe somebody to a subscription, that'll save a bit of the complexity of duplicating logic between PayPal and our backend service. So these are all just my thoughts on the matter. So it kind of becomes a matter of what can this configuration object contain? If we can just have one plan ID, that would be the, the best. You know, magazine subscription. And then inside of this method, if I could just define the parameters here, this is all, this is a little bit of dynamic JavaScript, as you can tell about the most JavaScript in our project is on this page. It's, I think it's using view. Uh, so we can, in essence, um, every time these uh, subscription components change, I could be updating this Actually, nothing would have to happen. On the next page, we have our payment. So it'll have the, it'll have all the information. It needs, so it's the same question though. 
can I specify this dynamically? Where's the documentation for the actions, right? Now there's API docs, I, I can just use those. And it's not very sort of mobile responsive. All right, so the plan is what you subscribe to. I will probably do those by hand. I don't want to be doing any of this stuff. I, if, I don't want to show plan details, list plan, anything in our, I don't want that tight of an integration. I mean, I just don't have the capacity for that. As, as sole developer on a you know, small organization website, I can't uh, implement all of these. And frankly, from a payment process perspective, I don't need like such a complicated setup. I just need to be able to make single payment and recurring payment with some metadata. You know, if some other service uh, offers that, I would be grateful. But nonetheless, on this project, we're using PayPal. So basically, here it is create subscription. So we get these headers. Hopefully, we'll have just a singular plan ID. And it looks like we can customize the subscription. And in particular, we'll have just one sequence uh, ongoing and specify the pricing scheme. I did research a bit in advance. Uh, fixed price currency code and value this is really similar to what we did in the uh, the payments to a certain extent aside from being now this is recurring so I think this is gonna be okay is there a place I can just pop some metadata or most of that I suppose will live in our system we'll track the subscription types there I've already got that set up all right, so without exposing um, private information, I believe I can log into the sandbox and get my business credentials, my sandbox business credentials. One moment. Chewing a bit of ice as well. Let me mute myself. While I chew my ice. So I do have some sandbox credentials. Or the business account. This is the personal account. We're going to want to log in as the business person. Business. Here, I don't know if I should use a oops private window or something so I can swap between business and personal. Okay, operations sales. <clears throat> so we have made we've received some payments. That was a big step. That took several hours. Oh boy. Hmm. How do I just define subscriptions? Mm hmm. Yes, yes. Let's get started. 
One, choose a product. Product name, magazine. It's uh, the Western Friend Magazine. Boom, product ID, WF. Mag, as in. I don't know, do you have to have it like that? Product type, mm, it's a bit of both. It's digital and physical, that is kind of weird. It's called service. Industry category, what? Books and magazine, but we offer service. Product URL, I don't want to do those. Okay, we're gonna create a subscription for magazine. Create the plan, fixed pricing. Keep it simple here. Magazine subscription. Description for the magazine. I guess. Unlimited. Unlimited. And we will just say as a baseline. It's not very much. Ah, this is any this is annual. Baseline is twenty. Low income. That's our least common denominator. Well, I guess thirty, but denominator thirty. How many? Let's be miss cycles. Well, it's annual. So. And we're 501c3, so it's tax exempt. It's sort of a donation. Let me just check my chat. All right. I have to refresh my tonic in line. So we got WF Magazine product. Plan magazine subscription. How do I get my and we need to do these web hooks and stuff. Well, actually, let me try something. If it'll list the subscriptions here and we completely just delegate, um, delegate this to Western friend, I mean, to PayPal, that's a choice we can make. It'll just require manually synchronizing accounts for the people who read it online. And uh, that's something we were trying to not do. Trying not to do. Do this later. Can I just view the code? Well, one way to do it. So we've got some code and I'm just gonna check. What kind of, must be JavaScript. Uh, PayPal, subscription, static.
All right. Some buttons. There's our plan ID. And this is all, you know, for me, it's going to call back to our system. Okay, so not too bad, not too bad. Go to plans. So I think that's the basic thing. That's what we need. Refresh my drink and be right back. All right, cool. So we've got a bit of reference code. Since it's a JavaScript file, though, uh, I see. I should keep that because that'll on our client ID there too. Well, it's public knowledge. Let me see the documentation here. This is uh, PayPal JavaScript SDK. The thing is, I just realized this is all client side code. So that means that we can't, you know, dynamically specify the price because anyone can just specify any price and subscribe. So we previously were making anything financial on the server, but that's not the way PayPal works. It has this weird everything's client side idea, and the server does make some. In other words, very thin server most of the logic's on the client and the server is just handling passing the API request All right, so I've got to see the whole flow. I'm trying to think. 
ways we can do this dynamically swapping out the button if i define 12 fields on the subscribe page one for each product id combinatorically and when you update this form view will swap out the paypal button which would have the corresponding id you know that's feasible the pricing will be out of sync though man if we want to change the pricing we have to change it in both places or i have to start fetching the price from paypal gosh what i would like and maybe it's possible i just don't know how to do it i just need to create a subscription instance on the server this is the way i designed it and then we go to a payment page that populates the amount of payment and in, uh, in sort of gets it in a secure way synchronized between um, the payment processor the client and ourselves using like a I forget, just using um, an encrypted token. So the person sees this and agrees to that, and we. Save that and they are presented a payment form. For the amount. And it's securely verified by the payment processor that we're not manipulating the amount post display and the user can't either. Hmm. Ah, man. All right, so what this is going to do is going to create a, this is going to, when they submit this form, Basically, PayPal wants us to define everything on their service. I get it. That's not how I would like to operate. is simplistic.
the same details though. It says the endpoint will accept these um, structures, so basically This is just taking away a possibility of doing any kind of server-side validation. I don't like this. Unless I define everything in PayPal's system, I don't want to do that. This is legacy. You know, their legacy used to be a decent solution. We can't really do this approach because we have too many plans. We have 12 of them. All right, I can figure this out. <clears throat> I just don't want it to be super kludgy, but it's difficult to synchronize these. Yeah, and so there's like hard coding in the template, that's not a very practical solution. You know, where are you gonna maintain this throughout your code base and your PayPal and your templates and logic? It's just we have twelve possible subscriptions. I need to create a payment intent on the server 
somehow send that to PayPal, get a, a validated nonce back and to display it to the client. The way the brain tree works is the ideal or stripe. Hmm. Yeah, it's this whole out of stream process, out of bound process. I'm basically going in circles in their documentation. Yeah, and furthermore, we allow people to say, I only want to subscribe for one year, which needs to be kind of customized. And it's, you know, any people are in generally good faith on this website, but you know, what's stopping somebody from doing? whatever combination. So if they want to get the print PDF and then just modifying the client side code to change the price even to free. It needs to go through our server, not PayPal's out of band process and not through their manage interface, management interface, which is real disenfranchising. And there's ways of there's trusted ways of, of sharing truth between the client, the user, the server, and the merchant, and the payment pr provider, using a nonce like to guarantee that we haven't manipulated the price that we've displayed to a user that they've agreed to a price, and we have that agreement back on our server, and we can ensure that the user is not manipulating the price. And that's how Braintree works. And the further, the thing that makes it more annoying is that we have to then manage all of our subscriptions through PayPal and we really can't do much on our website. We are synchronizing. When you subscribe to the website, you get access to members only content latest issues of the magazine 
through your login account. I could still probably make that happen in the the callback here. But that leaves it open for abuse from somebody else. I just have a really bad feeling about this. That when they on approve, we could call back with the subscription ID, then I have to validate it on the server that it was actually paid. Or we can just do non-renewing subscriptions, which is not ideal either. Hmm. I need to do this on the server. Prior to displaying the payment option to the end user, so the interaction or integration with our server and PayPal happens, they create an instance I create a corresponding subscription instance with PayPal and then the PayPal presents it to the user in a payment form with the agreed upon cost. So the, the cost they pay, they see what I sent to the server basically. They see the cost and they had already agreed to that cost when they sent it to our, the request to our server. This is basically how the brain tree works. Like me. Like our subscribe page doesn't do much work, but when we get, when we send it over to the payment, We have just a single plan, magazine subscription. These were deprecating anyway. my pot complaining. Go ahead and remove this. I know this is going to be basically obsolete if we go further, as well as this, as well as this. Here's where we get this nonce, and I think that includes the agreed upon 
at least the payment method that the user supplied. And here we pass in this subscription price on our server. And I believe this nonce is the combination of the payment instrument, the price, and a salt. So I can't forge this and charge them more than they agreed to at the time the payment process form was submitted. There's a commitment from the client end that creates a token that will not validate if I manipulate it. So we're passing this through. All right. You know, this is very flexible. I can just make some generic code that is secure, is validated both, you know, so I'm not manipulating it. I'm held accountable and the user is held accountable and both of us have um, mutually agreed upon a price amount. And so my code can be fairly flexible and dynamic. You know, this nonce is what holds us both accountable for the subscription as well. You know, Braintree is not without his problems, and one of the problems was they deactivated our account due to inactivity. There's also some user experience or visual bugs in there, and it feels a bit like PayPal doesn't know what to do with Braintree. Like it might be and be on the verge of just throwing the project out. Another thing with Braintree is in order to even get an activated account, you have to talk to their sales department to start. I don't know if that's necessarily the case with PayPal or Stripe, for example. I'm advocating that we use Stripe, but uh, not getting any real traction there. Well, I don't think there's anything else I can kind of delete right now. Yeah, because we want to we want to be able to pull donation reports from our CMS. We want to be able to synchronize a subscription with our users so that when one of our users subscribes, they get subscriber access to the magazine issues. We don't want to have to manually copy and paste email addresses, which I don't know, may mismatch from the user registered on the site to the one that email they use when they made a donation. I don't want to display a dozen of these big blocks for donation choices. I need to summarize my thoughts so that I can report my findings.
So yeah, I'm kind of really disappointed. I'm really disappointed. I mean, the, the PayPal payment and donation subscription flow in particular, but the, also the payments flow. It's just really 1998. I don't think I should go in further with this pull request. Except to fix this. It's a donation page. Which is basically just yanking out functionality where we had a nice donation system. And we got donation form. Clicking donor addresses. This is just handing seating over control completely to PayPal. We're making it much more difficult to have a cohesive donor experience and collect the fields and integrate them with our content management system. When I have to use just the PayPal donate button. There's this Django PayPal standard. We see this amount can be modified by the user, I'm, ass I'm assuming.
So I have to just do the validation. I have to check every field is the same, which is basically what that nonce was doing anyway. in the uh, yeah. Yeah, the IPN is an out of band process though as well because the user will have submitted the form and IPN comes back. It's not in the request response cycle. So then we, we could validate that they didn't modify these parameters, these properties in the webhook basically. But in the meantime, you know, the webhook is almost instantaneous admittedly. Then we would just what deactivate their account? How do we recover uh, the you know deactivate the subscription? How do we recover and ask them to pay again? Uh, it just seems weird. I would rather not let them modify those properties at all, so I don't have to do any more verification once we've agreed on a price. Uh, I've created it and I presented a payment screen. Let me see how did this payment work with Braintree. Essentially, you view payment processing page. Oh, that's the wrong one. So for example, there's no model, it's just the, um, so we get a salt, we send this to the client. And that's going to allow them to directly communicate with Braintree and create a that nonce, I believe. So it renders it. All of these allow us to 
agree on the price of a donation or a bookstore order with a client, a subscription, validate that it's um, not been tampered with. I mean, a donation amount wouldn't be, there'd be no reason, but the bookstore order, you everything is calculated on the server. You just specify the book quantity and then the pricing is all done on the server. Subscription, similarly, you choose a subscription type. It, the stuff in the client is just aesthetic. It's actually not controlling any of the logic. The server side has all of the actual calculation logic. That's, that's everything on the client here is just presentational. None of this is really meaning anything. You could mess with the JavaScript all you want, but you have to submit the request to our server to subscribe with the correct, you know, this is a form, so they have to be valid. Price group has to have a value that is in an enum. So this is, you can't really tamper with this. So from the client to our back end, it's pretty straightforward and secure. Even if they tampered with the price, there isn't a price field in this form. This is just information we display so that you know what you're choosing, what to expect. Then a subscription is created, not activated. And we hand it over to the payment processor flow. All the subscription information is still on our server. So from the payment processor standpoint, This is a helper function that's used in a number of places. I see what's going on here. Um, yeah, because we're calculating this payment total based on all of these functions. So in other words, when we're processing a donation payment, we're going to render the, you know, based on whether or not it's a post or the nonce is missing. But all of this is the initial thing is you render the processing page with the cost of the item, whether it's a donation that was agreed to previous step or the subscription that was agreed to in a previous step or the um, bookstore order. All right. They all have this get total cost method interface, but it doesn't matter so much that they have something that can pass a total to their render page. That's on a regular get request. Then if they do submit the page, Braintree creates a nonce. That's a secure way of making sure I don't tamper with anything. And if that didn't come in, we're just going to render this page again with the same information. Otherwise, we have some conditional logic in the donation for a single and recurring because you have to handle the recurring as a subscription and a single as a transaction. And then those are both generalized functions. I mean, this is, I think I've spent a lot of time on this code. I think it's just written, uh, the way I would prefer it to be written. It's not perfect, but it feels much more kind of sort of the right way, so to speak. I don't know of a better way of describing that. The PayPal thing is not seeming like a good idea. I don't know a different way to articulate this. Here's a subscription payment, for example. Get our things, we grab that subscription object. If it's just a, a get request, we're gonna render the payment processing page 
whatever that returns here is going to render into the client with the subscription cost for the payment total. So this is very generic. The user sees the subscription cost in the payment form. They fill in the details of the form. We can look at the subscription page. Granted, they could manipulate that here. Potentially, I don't know. So maybe this isn't secure for our purposes. They would then could potentially modify the payment total. Submit, they'd have to recreate the, they just reevaluate this function in the client with an alternative total. So I don't know if it's actually guaranteed. But they submit it. We get a post with a not. Mm, here's the thing. I run the transaction with the order get total cost. So if they had manipulated it in the client, I'm not using the value in the request. I'm using the order value. So if this doesn't match, the nonce that Braintree has, you know, if the value has changed, it will not validate. And we'll redirect to cancel. So yeah, this is overall feeling more legitimate, I would say. Uh, more bit secure and well-designed. Yeah, so all this to say, I'm kind of going through this process. I'm thinking aloud, of course. I don't have a good feeling about PayPal. Subscription flow. I don't understand it probably. Maybe I'm missing something. So I stand to be corrected. I can see why they would acquire Braintree because the developer experience is much more sophisticated. Uh, but the user experience, I think, on the Braintree administrative dashboard is a bit to, leaves a bit to be desired. I'm not sure that the Braintree subscriptions and transactions would appear in the PayPal side of things. We might be able to ask their sales team. The key is you have to contact sales to even try the service. It's kind of exclusive in that way. And I don't believe that's a way to scale a business very effectively. I would probably highly recommend us to use Stripe. I think that's more of an industry standard, but I don't have any firsthand experience with Stripe. I don't like having to rewrite all this code in any way. This has been a big time sink. A lot of time invested here. So it's a sunken cost, but um, also it's delaying our project pretty substantially. All right, well, I don't know what else I can do. It's almost eight o'clock. So I will just, <laughs> I have to call it an evening.
Well, this has been another live complaining session. <laughs> I didn't get a lot of code done. Um, But I think that's a big part of the coding process is, you know, thinking and thinking about trade-offs, trying things, trying things in the branch, you know, going ahead without too much fear, you know, you're working in a relatively safe way. Uh, we can't think of everything, so we do have to try stuff out. And uh, those trials and those failures can teach us the important lessons of life and in particular in of code and I think my lesson today is just don't use PayPal if you can avoid it uh, the PayPal developer experience is kind of strange it's not what I would expect from sort of a payment processor uh, Copyright emptor, I could just be completely misunderstanding this or missing some documentation that would give me more confidence. But from what I can see, this is they're relying way too heavily on client side code for things and on out of band processes on us defining our data on PayPal's terms and PayPal systems, uh, which also creates you know lock in and things like that. So that that's just one additional concern among the others. So yeah, just to you know, reiterate, this is just part of the learning process. And if you have any other advice or perspectives, feel free to add some comment. If there's a tutorial you think might just open up my eyes to something I'm completely missing, uh, I'd, be glad, I'd be grateful and glad to read it. I have looked for some tutorials and some libraries, but another example is Python has deprecated their Python, or uh, PayPal has deprecated their Python library, showing that they're not really supporting much in terms of server side uh, application flow uh, aside from very thin uh, API wrappers functions like most of this is it's pretty heavy client side all right well, I'll quit griping and hopefully figure this out projects we're trying to launch and in the staging stage where we should be getting ready to launch we're redeveloping the payment flow that doesn't seem also like a good development process something's wrong there with the project health i'll have to bring all these concerns up at the weekly meeting all right well thanks for checking out the uh, stream if you're checking out the video feel free to leave any comments or suggestions about your favorite payment processors or maybe some advice on how i could use paypal properly if i'm making a mistake okay well, have a great day and i hope you're doing well see ya